All right. So after a 21 to 7 loss to the Seattle Seahawks and an abysmal performance by the offense on the road on Monday night on national television, which is not a good look, we are hearing a lot of criticism of Kirk Cousins. And it's it's earned. I mean, he had, he had a terrible game. Uh, although the offensive line was looking absolutely just rugged. It was bad. But um, Kirk Cousins, he ended up with, let me see here, he went 20 for 33, 208 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions, uh, took two sacks, a QBR of 26.7, and a quarterback rating of 89. And also a fumble loss that went for a touchdown. Um, I mean, my question to you and to everybody else out here, um, how much is Kirk to blame for this loss? Well, uh, I tell you what, Sean, uh, to me, it's, it's twofold. Uh, Kirk Cousins bears some responsibility. There's absolutely no doubt. And not only about this past game, but just kind of what's been going on in, uh, during the season in terms of his in- inability to win the big games, his inability to make the big plays. Um, I think, uh, you know, he's a quarterback that it's just flat out. He's just not going to give you that. He's not going to give you that moment of brilliance uh, that maybe, uh, uh, you know, a different quarterback like Drew Brees or Tom Brady or Joe Montana in his time. He's just not that. So, so to that part, I think, uh, yeah, he, he, he was brought in here as someone that is supposed to be uh, given those moments of brilliance. And I think, you know, there's another part to it where, you know, the offensive line is a problem. Uh, we know the uh, play calling was a problem. Um, but I think in the end, Sean, the, the issue with, with Kirk Cousins is the price tag because uh, we all just need to be okay and come into the conclusion that He's just not a big play guy. He's not a big time moment person. He's gonna. He's just. He's just one more piece that was added to a team that needs to win as a team. You know, I'm sorry to say it, and and you know, for the folks that are listening, Kirk Cousins is just not going to take the team on his shoulders and and win a big game. I'm yeah. sorry. That's just that's just the flat out truth. But you know, the quarterback market. It's what it is now. And, and if you want a quarterback that can't throw the ball half decent, you're going to have to pay him similar to what we had to pay him. It's just the way, that's just the way it goes. So, so I guess it's, it's, he shares some responsibility, but he doesn't. Um, and I think um, he, he, there, there's something to be said about him being a little bit of a piñata for the media because there are other quarterbacks that are getting paid, if not as much, just as much. Or, or, you know, say Matt Ryan or, or even the same Aaron Rodgers, um, <laughs> Matthew Stafford. And I mean, and, and I don't hear the media pounding them, you know, left and right. So I think it, that part is a little bit unfair because, uh, you know, they just want to hang on to the price tag and, 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 and just hammering as a piñata. But Vikings fans, we just need to realize and be okay. He's not a big game big time big play quarterback and and we're gonna we're gonna have to win as a team and he's gonna have to have self-confidence for him to be able to perform at a high level and only a good offensive line and a good play calling offensive coordinator is gonna give him that yeah I um I'm right there with you on Kurt um it's a shame but I mean, it's kind of – we weren't bringing him in to be the savior of the team. And that's that's where a lot of fans kind of get misconstrued with the whole Kirk Cousins bit and everything. We brought him in to have stability at the quarterback position. We didn't necessarily know what Case Keenum was. We had one season – one great season out of him. And we, we were still unsure because we saw Case Keenum in previously and it just – uh, it was so so. It was is it was an average quarterback, and we also felt that Pat Shermer's offense uh, aided Case Keenum a lot last year. But 
they need to realize we brought Kirk Cousins in for stability at the quarterback position. But what we're not getting out of the quarterback position is consistency. And that is what we need. And Kirk Cousins lacks the confidence to be able to have that consistency throughout the season. Earlier in the season, we had our bumps during games. We, we had our, our, like you said earlier, the 49er game, we kind of had a lapse in time where the offense just was kind of flat. We weren't really moving the ball. We had the first two and a half, almost three quarters against the Green Bay Packers where it just it wasn't working at all. And we just we turned it on in the fourth quarter and everything was working. Uh, Buffalo Bills game we sh- we don't even need to talk about that but there's time there was times especially early in the season where you saw what this offense could be and you saw what we were capable of but when teams schemed against us we weren't able to scheme back and get out of those those schemes that they were throwing at us so we can't necessarily put all this regression on Kirk Cousins just in the season because again back to the DeFilippo thing I honestly feel like DeFilippo just wasn't doing a good job as an offensive coordinator, and it was kind of throwing our players under the bus because when our offense isn't clicking, the first person they're going to look at is Kirk Cousins because he's the guy that just got the $84 million guaranteed contract. And then second person you're going to look at is probably Diggs or you're going to look at Thielen. Diggs just got paid to – Thielen probably wasn't getting as much fire uh, until after he kind of got his – his uh, recognition with the 100-yard game streak and everything. So it's just we got to realize what Kirk is. But we also got to understand we have the team to be able to be successful with Kirk Cousins. But the offensive coordinator wasn't putting our offense in situations to succeed. And what's crazy is that this past game against the Seattle Seahawks, when we actually ran the ball, we found ourselves in a lot and I mean a lot of third and shorts, a couple of fourth and shorts, and we couldn't convert. We just couldn't convert. And that goes to creativity of play calling. But again, the first person they're going to look at is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins can't convert on third and two, third and one, or fourth and one, fourth and two. That's the first person they're going to look at. So don't listen to all the mainstream media fans out there, all our followers. Do not listen to mainstream media. When you turn on NFL Network, they're going to be down talking Kirk to the fullest. Because to be completely honest with you, most of the time, the fans that are actually out here watching their team and deep diving into their own team know more about their own team than a lot of these mainstream, um, mainstream commentators and everything. do. So just trust your own judgment and know that Kirk Cousins isn't the guy that's going to be the, the big play guy that's that's going to necessarily come up in real, real crunch time. Oh, I mean, hopefully we do get some time. Out of that. And we got it in, in Green Bay, actually. Crunch time, he actually showed up. He put us in positions to score, and our field goal kicker just couldn't take advantage of it. So we know he's capable, but do, don't expect him to, to come out here and, and be Tom Brady because he's not. He's Kirk Cousins. Be happy with it. It's a whole lot better than what we've had before. Although it may not look like it this past Monday night. But um, I would take Kirk Cousins in a heartbeat over a Christian Ponder, over a Gus Farratt, over a Tavares Jackson, over – hell, I love Case Keenum. But I would take Kirk Cousins over Case Keenum, even with the price tag. But I do think Kirk Cousins does deserve some of the blame, especially for Monday night. But um, it starts at the top. It's a trickle-down effect. So –